All right, so <clears throat> here we are with the uh, second portion here of muscles. We're going to look at muscles of the arm and muscles of the hand. So here's your list of structures to know. Uh, <clears throat> be sure that you look at all of these, both on the models, the Syndaver, and of course in APR as well. Here is your overall uh, picture here, a guide. This is the um, Sindaver. This picture here is actually the Sindaver that we don't have here at the moment. The one we have just has the muscles, but you can still uh, see the location of these muscles pretty well. And now here we have a good posterior view here. Uh, I really like these pictures because they show us both the model and the Sindaver. So you can kind of see how they correlate um, and what they look like. Um, it's really important to be able to do that. It really helps your understanding. And if you try to find these muscles on your own and differentiate them and go between the two, it really helps you to learn them and not just try to memorize them. If I just stand up there and point and memorize, uh, you're not going to learn them near as well as if you sit down and really uh, look through uh, and find these and, and compare them with the ones that are next to them and kind of figure out how to tell the difference. That's the way to approach this. All right, so here we have the deltoid. It is a triangular shaped or triangular like shaped muscle. Uh, it's going to abduct the arm, so take it away. Uh, <clears throat> the anterior fibers are going to flex and then medially rotate the arm, so rotate towards the middle. Uh, the posterior fibers are going to extend and then laterally rotate the arm. Next, we have here the coracobrachialis, all right? And so the name here uh, gives you a hint about where it's at. It's a small, almost a cylindrical type muscle. It looks a little more cylindrical on the model um, than it does on the Sindaver. Um, <clears throat> so it is going from the coracoid process of the scapula, hence cor coraco, uh, to the medial humerus, which is also known as the brachial area or brachium, so this is where the term comes from, is going to flex and abduct the arm, okay, so remember if it's abducted, it's pulled away. Uh, the in origin is going to be that coracoid process on the scapula, and the insertion is going to be that medial shaft of the humerus, kind of mid-length of the humerus, and so you can see in the lower picture, um, let's see if I can get uh, highlighters show up. In the lower picture here, there, well, it's a pin, but anyway, so you can see there it's kind of inserting right into the middle. And you can also see that really well here where it's actually uh, shown on the humerus. Next, we have the terrace major, and of course, major always means uh, larger or greater. So there's two of these. We have major and minor. So this is the greater, terrace means rounded, uh, even though. On this endeavor, it's very flat. Uh, you can see on the, the model there, it is more rounded. So it's called the greater rounded muscle and it abducts the arm, assist in that. You can see we have several muscles that do that. Medially rotates the arm and assists in arm extension as well. So here is the terrace minor. This is the lesser rounded uh, muscle. It, it assists in laterally rotating the arm. And as you can see, this is a pretty small muscle. It, it's kind of hard to uh, easily identify. Um, but if you look closely in the pictures and then compare it to what you see in the classroom, you will be able to find it. All right, next here we have the supraspinatus, supra meaning above. Uh, and so this is the above the spine muscle, okay? And it means the spine of the scapula there. And it is going to abduct the arm, um, and it actually is the muscle that will initiate abduction. So here we have the infraspinatus. This means below the spine, and it is going to laterally rotate the arm. It is much larger. It's pretty easy to see here. So here's some more really good diagrams. I love these side-by-side -side comparisons where you can see how the um, Sindaver compares with the muscle. And, and you can pull these up and actually look at it. And to go through them is a really good way to work these. And then next to that on the right is the color-coded portion. So it really does help. I really like these pictures here. These are the superficial muscles, by the way, of the anterior uh, actually, these are posterior um, forearm. Uh, it says anterior, but looking at the Sindaver, this has got to be the posterior muscles.
All right, so here we have the subscapularis. This is sub meaning below or under. This is the under the scapula for scapularis muscle. Uh, this is going to medially rotate the arm and assist in extension. All right, and so you kind of have to lift the scapula up in order to see this well on this endeavor. This is the biceps brachii, which means uh, two-headed by, meaning by uh, two-headed. Uh, and of course, it's in the brachial area. And it is going to flex the forearm, um, the long head, and supinate as well. So next here, we have the triceps brachii. This is the three-headed arm muscle. And it extends the forearm. So you can't see here, flexion extension let's see i don't know how to get really well in here so extension flexion all right uh, so it's going to extend the forearm the long head extends and adducts add uh, the origin is go for the long head is going to be just below the glenoid cavity of the scapula so again i hope you really got your uh, skeletal system features down uh, the lateral head uh, is the posterior and lateral humerus and then the medial head the origin is deep to the lateral um, well the medial head is deep to the lateral and the long head the medial head is going to originate on the distal posterior humerus. All of the heads are going to insert on the olecranon process of the ulna. And where's that olecranon process? It's going to be here down by your elbow, right? So next we have the brachialis. Uh, this one is actually pretty easy to see on this endeavor there. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, going to act to flex the forearm. All right, next we have the brachioradialis. Um, <clears throat> so this runs from the uh, lateral humerus to the radius. The origin is on the distal humerus above the lateral epicondyle, and the insertion is the styloid process of the uh, radius. It's going to act to flex the elbow and assist in pronation and supination. All right. Uh, you can kind of trace it down to the insertion point um, from the lateral epicondyle on the humerus. All right. And you can kind of see how it starts on the humerus and it actually crosses over the elbow. Uh, and it's going to insert on the styloid process there of the radius right next to the carpals. It's a good way to locate that one. By the way, a lot of these pictures here. Um, these here towards the uh, bottom right here with the with the green highlights of the muscles, those are all in the uh, Sindaver pages that I have posted uh, in the side by side ones. So if you want to find those, perhaps if I don't have some in the video or if you need to make them larger, that's where you can find them. OK, and also these pictures of origin and insertion, those are all also located uh, in there for any muscle that the Sindaver has, which is almost all of them. All right, so here we have the supinator. So how do we remember supinator and pronator, right? So we're going to hold our soup and we're going to pour it out. So pronation is to go this way. Here we go, a little easier to see. Supination is this way. I'm going to hold my soup, okay? So supinator, of course, means it's going to supinate the forearm. Uh, it's kind of roughly triangular shaped uh, at the proximal end of the forearm. Uh, it's going to insert onto the radius next to the pronator teres, uh, but this muscle is going to originate on the uh, lateral epicondyle, again, of the humerus, all right? while the pronator teres originates on the medial epicondyle. So that's how you can differentiate between these two is go and look at those. So here is the pronator teres. This one is uh, short and kind of runs oblique, so it's pretty easy actually to point out. Um, it is a rounded pronator, uh, pronates the forearm, so pronate, pour out the soup, uh, going to, uh, the origin is going to be uh, found on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the coronoid process of the ulna. Uh, the insertion is the lateral radius, kind of mid-shaft mid there. All right, so here is the anterior aspect of the uh, forearm here. Um, you can see several things here. The extensor pollicis brevis, 
the extinctor in dices, um, a few that we don't do, the aconeus, so that is a um, tendon there, not a tendon, but a, uh, a ponuresis, uh, abductor pollicis, extensor pollicis, uh, but you can see the supinator really good there as well. All right, so now we have the pronator quadratus. Well, quadratus means uh, four, so this is four-sided. And it kind of, or it does, actually, if you look here at the top right portion, that picture, it looks like a quadrilateral. All right, so it, it looks kind of... Uh, square shaped almost but of course at a bit of an angle a rectangle um so this is a square muscle on the distal end of the forearm uh, it is attached to both the radius and the ulnus and so it pronates the forearm um you're gonna have to on the syndaver pull some of the superficials aside to see it um you don't see it so well on the model, but you, that picture there on the right is pretty good. You can see uh, it's highlighted in green here, and so it's also kind of under this band that holds them together. All right, so you just kind of have to pull those apart and really look. All right, so now we have the flexor carpi radialis. And so a lot of these names tell you about their actions. So obviously this one is going to flex. Uh, it is going to uh, insert, uh, because of the name carpi, it's going to be carpals or metacarpals, all right? And radialis tells you it's going to be near or insert or originate something like that on the, on the radius. And so these names tell you a lot of things if you just stop and think about them. Uh, so this is, its name basically means the wrist bender of the radius. That's what flexor carpi radialis could kind of <laughs> loosely be interpreted as. Uh, it's a little medial towards the little finger, um, kind of goes in a little bit of a diagonal path there, uh, runs that diagonal path across the forearm. It goes from the medial epicondyle of the humerus to the metacarpals on the distal end of the radius, and it's going to insert on the second and third metacarpals. So if you can trace that down and follow those ligaments to where they insert, it's going to really help you to find this one. Um, and so it's going to flex the wrist and abduct the arm. I'm sorry, the hand, which means it's going to move it laterally. OK, so abduction is a way, right? Adduction, you're moving it, adding it back to your body. All right, so uh, now we can see here the deeper muscles of the anterior forearm. Be sure to not forget about these. You have to, to remove things or on the uh, solid uh, models, or you have to pull away the superficial models on the syndaver. Okay. Here's the other view here of the deep muscles where they're not highlighted. You can kind of see the anatomy here of the models a little bit better. All right, so here we have the flexi carpi. Flexor <laughs> carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris, all right. Um, and in the one picture, you can see the radialis and the ulnaris, and that's a, a, a good picture to kind of study so that you can tell these apart. There's a lot of arm muscles, and they look very, very similar, so you have to really pay attention to the origin and insertion on a lot of these, okay? And so this is the wrist bender of the ulna. Uh, it is going to flex the wrist and abduct, yes, sorry, I had to think about that if I was saying that right, abduct the hand. The origin is on the uh, medial epicondyle of the humerus and the olecranon process of the ulna. Insertion is going to be on the metacarpal and medial, uh, metacar uh, medial carpals. Um, it is the most medial of the flexor muscles, so it's going to be the one that's in the middle. And it run, runs a, uh, alongside the owner side, or they remember that's the little finger side of the forearm. And so you can follow that tendon to the owner side of the wrist, okay? To the owner side of the wrist. So it's going to go on down towards your pinky. All right, so here you have the palmaris longus. Uh, this is the long palm muscle. Uh, it is going to flex the wrist. It is narrower than the flexor digitorum superficialis and a bit superficial to that. Uh, it's, gonna, it's a long tendon and it extends directly to the center of the wrist. Okay, so directly to the center of your palm uh, and you can follow that tendon as it travels towards the middle of the palm to locate this one. 
All right, so here we have the flexor digitorum profundus. All right, and anything that says digitorum is going to be going towards your, your fingers or toes or your digits, all right? Uh, and so this is going to be the deep finger bender, and it's going to flex the phalangeal joints, all right, the phalangeal joints. And so you can see here um, in both of these pictures that the tendons are going to go on down into the digits. Oh, look, at it. it goes all the way up to the fingers here. You can really see that it's doing that, okay? All right, now we've got the flexor digitorum superficialis. So we're going to look for something that is more superficial and is going to have several tendons traveling down to the digits. OK, and um, it's going to have numerous branches there if it's a if it's a digitorum. OK, uh, one exception to that is the flexor digitorum longus in the leg. Um, the insertion here is the uh, tendon on the fingers that's going to identify this as a digitorum muscle um, instead of a carpi, flexor carpi. Okay, so follow the tendons down to the fingers. Superficial finger bender flexes that those joints again, uh, medial to the flexor carpi radialis. Um, and that one again does not insert on the fingers, but on the carpals. So any of these digitorum, basically you want to really be sure that you look towards to those tendons and follow them down to the digits. All right, so some of these uh, were easier to put two on the page. Um, and they lie next to each other, so it's, it's pretty uh, handy that way. This is the extensor carpi radialis longus and the extensor carpi radialis brevis. And you need to be sure that you do learn all of these names because if you put extensor carpi radialis, I don't know if you mean longus or brevis. Okay, so this is kind of like histology. It's got some long names that you really need to practice and write them out. Actually, write them, writing them out helps okay um you can even draw the shape of the muscle using the words that's kind of actually a handy visualization text and technique to learn these um so extensor of course we know it's going to do some extension this is the long wrist stretcher uh the radius um or the short wrist stretcher of the radius uh both extend the wrist and abduct the hand this is the most lateral of the extensors and it's going to run along the radial side of the forearm which is the thumb side um slightly parallel to the brachioradialis um the extensor carpi radialis brevis is deep and medial to the longus and is smaller than the longus okay um this does not extend to the fingers it's not a digitalis but this is going to insert on the metacarpals all right so here we have the extensor uh digiti minimi um and so of course this is going to go down to the digits or the fingers uh and it minimi of course you can think little finger here minimi so this is the small finger stretcher and you can see it's a very thin narrow muscle um it's going to extend the uh, phalangeal joints uh, very thin located medial to the extensor digitorum um, the tendon extends to the little finger uh, follow it the tendon there is how you will locate this one now we have the extensor carpi ulnaris um, this is going to be the wrist stretcher of the ulna it's going to extend the wrist and adduct the hand. It's located on the ulnar or little finger side of the posterior forearm. And follow the you're going to follow the tendon to the attachment on the metacarpal on the ulnar side of the hand. Uh, and so this is the superficial forearm extensors here, kind of the overview slide. All right, just another good overview here. Here's the extensor digitorum longus. This is the finger stretcher, and of course it's digitorum, so it's going to have follow. You're going to want to follow the tendons all the way down to the digits. It's going to extend the joints, and it is medial to the extensor carpi radialis. Um, and you've got several of those branches to the fingers. Next, we have the abductor pollicis longus. This is the longer puller aware <laughs> of the thumb. It is going to abduct the thumb at the carpo metacarpal joint. 
um, it's got the most proximal origin nearest the elbow of the deep posterior forearm muscles. So that's a good way to find it. Uh, it is going to originate on the ulna and travel diagonally across the radius towards the thumb. So follow the tendon uh, laterally to the thumb, um, and that should help you find it. All right, so here is the extensor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis uh, brevis, the long thumb extensor stretcher. <laughs> the pomox is the thumb and the hallux is the big toe. So when you see hallucis or pollicis, that's going to tell you that it's going to go towards the thumb or the big toe. Uh, and so this is the short thumb extensor stretcher for the brevis, the long thumb extensor stretcher for the um, a long thumb extender stretcher for the uh, longest. Sorry, we got a little off track there for a moment. It's going to abduct the thumb, extend the thumb at the interphalangeal joint. Uh, the longest and the brevis are going to originate on different bones. Uh, the longest on the ulna, the brevis on the radius follow the tendons here. Uh, the extensor pollicis brevis is the only deep muscle on the posterior arm that originates on the radius. Okay, uh, now you can't see the origins on the model. Um, anyway, all right, so here we have the extensor indices. Remember, indices means the index finger. So this is going to extend and stretch the index finger. Um, very small arises on the uh, ulna near the wrist and then travels down towards the index finger. This is the smallest muscle and has the most distal origin of the three deep muscles that originate on the ulna. So follow the tendon there to the index finger. And again, here are the overview of these muscles.